William, fantastic that we're uh, heading up to York for the Welcome to Yorkshire Ebor Festival. How much do you and your team look forward to it? I think we. I, I think everyone in racing, Ollie, lo lo loves York. I, I haven't come across anyone who doesn't want to be there. Whether it's you fellows in the in the press and on the television, jockeys, trainers, owners, racing public, everyone wants to be at York. It's a fantastic race course and a fantastic meeting. Sadly, marred without uh, the fact that we don't have crowds this year, but it's 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 wonderful. And it is a, a real shame because the atmosphere, when it's sort of rocking on the naves, is a very, very special place. I think my most chilling memory uh, of racing was when Frankel won the Judmont. And I think anyone who was there, and they were eight deep trying to see him come into the winner's enclosure, to see Henry looking so poorly and, and to see his great horse, which had kept him alive probably win that race imperiously. I think that was one of the spine-tingling moments in uh, recent times, certainly. But the show must go on, and they do put on a good show. Absolutely. And despite the, the, the pandemic that we're in and the circumstances that we're in, some really competitive racing, as always. We'll talk through your team in a moment, but if I can just turn the clock back to your first winner at the Ebor Festival back in 1991 and, and Altea. Do you remember that day well? She won the Eagle Lane handicap it was then, a six furlong uh, sprint handicap. And she was owned by Peter and Pam Deal. And I said to Peter, right, this filly, we ought to train her for the Wokingham. And uh, the following year, so we kept her in training, which was important, uh, especially in those days when we didn't have many good horses. And. Uh, and then the following May, I completely missed the entry for the Wokingham and it was a disaster. And I couldn't sleep and I couldn't tell him and uh, I didn't tell him for a couple of days. And cricket, uh, Peter and Pam are fanatical cricket people, go everywhere, but especially to Lords for the Test match. And it just so happened that the Test match at Lords, can't remember who it was against, was on when the Wokingham was going to be run. And she had to have soft ground. So it was not soft, but not firm. She couldn't go on the firm. And all he said to me was, William, it happens, but if I'm rained off at the cricket, you're in trouble. <laughs> and it was a gloriously sunny day, and so be it. But there you go, that's the way it was. A relief. A relief. You're, a, you're a keen cricketer as well. I know. Did you play for Yorkshire Seconds? Is that right? One game. Right. How did Thanks. you get on? Uh, I got uh, 25. Bec <laughs> That's good for you, isn't it? Not bad for me, yeah. <laughs> I opened the batting with a chap called Ashley Metcalf, and there were four people in, the, in Headingley, four people watching, and they were all my family, and they all sat behind the bowler's arm, and when Metcalf took guard, he asked them to move because <laughs> they were in his eye line. <laughs> it was so embarrassing. <laughs> anyway, I rang Sir Michael and asked him for a, a tip. I said, I think I could play for Yorkshire if you give me a winner. <laughs> And it got stuffed, and I never played again, <laughs> so I blame him. Quite right. <laughs> but, but clearly your affiliation to Yorkshire, your links to Yorkshire, means that when you had your first winner at the Evil meeting in 1991, and every one of the 26 since has probably meant an awful lot to you personally. Links to Yorkshire? I'm a Yorkshireman. Well, absolutely. Most trainers in Yorkshire are Irish, <laughs> bar Tim Easterby and, and, and his uncle Mick, and a few others, obviously, but most of them are, are from the Emerald Isle. So I'm genuine Yorkshire, I just fled the nest quite early. But uh, yeah, I love having winners at York, obviously. It's great, and they're very kind to me up there. And we were leading trainer at York one year. 2015. For 2015, thank you very much. Five and minutes, and it you? gave me, enor no, 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 leading trainer at York throughout, throughout the, the year. Throughout the seasons. Yeah, and that gave me enormous pleasure to beat uh, Mr. Amara and Mr. Fahi. Enormous pleasure. I can imagine. And some terrific winners there, Sea of Class, of course, what a yeah. what a mare she was. Um, never won the Sky Bed Evil, though, unfortunately. No. This year? Well, we're going to try this year. Um, and we're going to try. We've got some chances this year. We, 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 but, you know, it'll, it'll be difficult to know. Last year, I think, uh, bottom weight was 105. Uh, it'll, I don't know whether it'll be as competitive this year because Covid obviously has restricted Irish runners and usually there's a plethora of staying stroke jumping horses come from Ireland um, to run. So I don't know quite how competitive 
it'll be competitive, but what the bottom weight will be. My Oberon is in the Strensel, and I'm tempted. I think a mile and a bit, half a furlong will suit him. Um, I have my views on the uh, incident with Tilsit in the race um, and at Goodwood, and I want to see him make amends. We weren't planning to lead at Goodwood. It was we were expecting Sylvester's horse to lead, but he got left. But can he in a way, because ultimately they didn't go very quickly? No, and... but he's too green. Right. And if you watch him win at York, he was lugging away from Tom's whip. Not that he was hitting him, but he, the, the horse is inexperienced. And I think at Goodwood, he was just starting, because it looked like Tilsit had his measure comfortably. But we felt that it actually he was only just getting his revs up. And, and he got squashed. Now, well, let's not go down there. We haven't got but time. You but spoke, you spoke very articulately, and, and actually, despite the fact that your horse was the one involved in the inquiry, etc., you spoke very composed, as we have come to know from you afterwards. Ultimately, for punters or listeners, viewers of this, looking at it, do you think you would have got back up, or do you think you would have won that day? Nobody... No, I'm not sure we would, because I think I, I watched it a few times since, and I think the winner won very comfortably. And I think the winner probably would have won. But we see races every day where if you froze it half a furlong from home, and there was a horse going to win the race, often gets beat for whatever reason, runs around or... Mm. But you can't have your only competition if you knock them over and win, you, it cannot be right that you can keep the race. Mm. If, if all you've got to do is beat one horse and you barge it out of the way... It, 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 so, so, and I, do, I know <laughs> we won't go into it in too much detail, yeah. but very quickly, some jockeys have come out saying the media and people are making too much of, of the interference rules. You, you, as I say, have been on, involved in a relatively, well, a pretty high profile stewards inquiry this year. Do, do you think more the punishments need to be stronger in order to ensure that, that that attitude that may or may not exist, may exist, in order to ensure that, that that isn't the mentality, that if you take one horse out, you've won the race, irrespective of what happens, well, really. Two people I have enormous respect for, Sir Mark and Joe Lyons, both think if you disqualify the horse that causes a problem, take it out of the race, then they'll stop doing it. It's simple. I don't think, I think the penalties should be more, but I think it, 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 it's got into this, there's a very gray area of intimidation where, you know, the jockey gets half a length in front and sort of leans across, most of them deliberately, just to make it a little bit more difficult without doing it and then pull the stick through. We had one at Sandown earlier in the season, which really upset me. Um, uh, where our horse didn't finish second, he finished fourth and, and nothing happened and the jockey was, was uh, given no penalty. We clearly knocked ours over and we were the only one that was going to beat him, but we came to a standstill, a horse called Surf Dancer, and that was disgraceful. But the point I'm trying to make is we in racing can't decide, but to the outsider who looks in at racing and sees it for the first time, it's like running in a 5,000 metre Olympic final and one fella is coming, you're running to, and you're going to win and one fella is, or, or one fella's in front and you come to challenge, you're going to win, but you just push him off the track to make sure you're going to win. I mean, it's even, it just can't happen. And I think the perception is wrong. I think it looks terrible. And the problem was we were involved in that incident, but it looks, it can't look right that the, if, if, you're, if you knock over your danger and win, how can that be allowed to stand? I just don't understand it, but there you go. Yeah, and, that, and that's the thing, when you spoke about it, it was more the wider issue. And, Absolutely. And, yeah, the perception of it. it it's, it's a debate I'm sure will run and run. But it, it, I, I, the trouble is that the, the stewards that day hid, not hid, but they said, this is the rule. And, and they took the rule as by the letter yeah, of the law. Absolutely. Yeah.
and, and basically... You can't really blame them for No, that. absolutely. And I said that. Yeah. I said, I quite understand. Do you think the rules are right? <laughs> yeah, well, and the then they weren't so yeah. sure. That's a but it's not their decision to make the rules. Mm. Very quickly, before we wrap this up, we, we've been, what, back two, two months, so I think, in, in racing resuming. What have you made of it? And, and, and how do you see the, the future with, with regards to racing in this climate? <sighs> about to wrap it up and then you bowl me the ultimate googly. Um, I think the powers that be have done a brilliant job to get racing back going, to be accepted by government and be accepted by everyone else. Covid is obviously still around uh, so we have to tread carefully but we've got our business and our industry back up and running which is fantastic. The prize money issue is a, is a huge one to see somebody uh, of Ed's calibre, Ed Vaughan's calibre, uh, say you can't make it pay. There are a lot of people in the same boat and possibly not as brave as Ed, waiting for that good horse to change it round for them. It's been really tough. We have to do something. We uh, have to do something to ensure that the prize money is increased quite dramatically and the ball is in the race course's court, I'm afraid, although they won't have it because they are the ones with the money and they're the ones subsequently because money is power usually and they have the power and and they are pleading poverty and 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 let me say this is some race courses are immaculate and others are not and you know we the horsemen have got big decisions to make uh, fairly soon as to how we handle the current situation but it is not going to be acceptable for trainers to have to relinquish their license, for owners to race for such a pittance, and nobody says that owners are in it to make a profit, but at the moment it's disgraceful. They're not even allowed to go racing and treated in a civilised manner. It, it's shocking, but let's all be a bit more positive than we've been and say we have a foundation of a fantastic industry the world has been in problems with COVID. The world has, not just racing. And so we must look a little bit more on the bright side and be positive and make things happen. And I think that's important. Keep the spirit up, keep going, keep producing these lovely horses. The jockeys keep riding to such a high level and let's just get on. So next year, hopefully we're back to normal. We've got a fantastic Royal Ascot and we're back at York and I'll be nearly 61 saying the same things.